Thanks, Mandy. Let me start by uh, making three statements. Is that okay? The first one is the following. And uh, it's so important, it's actually going to frame our entire conversation tonight, so I'm going to ask you to uh, say it with me. The size of my dream determines the level of my effort. That wasn't very well done in terms of saying it with me. <laughs> it's actually kind of sad. My feelings are kind of hurt. Can we all try it together now all at the same time? The size of my dream determines the level of my effort. I need you to remember this tonight because it's going to frame everything that we talk about, all okay? right? Now, how many are familiar with this statement? You can't, out, you can't out train a bad diet. Are you familiar with this? Right? Uh, I mean, this, the, the concept is pretty straightforward. No matter how hard you train, no matter how hard you work, if you keep putting bad stuff in, it's going to impede your goals, it's going to slow down your gains, it's going to work against you. Is that true? Right? It's a foundational principle to fitness. Right? It's about 20% exercise, 80% diet. You cannot out-train a bad diet. Now, if that is true, then I'd like to suggest to you that you can't out-hustle bad business practices. If you can't out-train a bad diet, you can't out-hustle bad business practices. Most of you are here not just as fitness enthusiasts, phenomenal stories of transformation, and how this has changed your lives and changed the lives of others around you. You're here as coaches. You're here as folks that are trying to transform other people's lives and build a business at the same time. Is that right? Right. Thank you. There's at least one person who's listening. That's great. I'll give you your $20 later, Deanna. Thank you very much. I'm a business coach by practice. That's what I do. Just like you work with individuals to help them perform better in, in their fitness and achieve their fitness goals and their physical goals, I work with organizations, both large and small, to help them perform at a higher level. We work with everything from solopreneurs like yourselves to billion dollar companies. And we work with leaders in industries and all kinds of companies. And what I've discovered is just like in the world of fitness where people are looking for shortcuts to health, people are also looking in the world of business for shortcuts to success. No such thing. And my goal tonight is to leave you with some principles that you can apply starting right away to start getting better res results in your business. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. All right. Say it again with me. The size of my dream determines the level of my effort. Why is this statement so important tonight? Because there are some of you here tonight that I understand do this thing full time. This is your gig. This is what you, you do every hour of every day. This is your full-time commitment. Others of you are doing this as a side thing, right? It's a part-time thing that you do in addition to a full-time job. I'm going to share some principles with you tonight, not all of them, depending on the, uh, the, the level of effort you're able to give to this phenomenal group and to this phenomenal organization. Uh, not all of them you'll be able to implement. And the big factor there is, is, is a simple one. It's the question of time. It's the question of capacity. It's the question of being able to handle, you know, multiple moving fronts all at the same time. And so tonight, the size of your dream determines the level of your effort. The reason I'm using this is regardless of the size of your dream right now, maybe your dream is just to build a business where you can help people and, and do this on the side in addition to your, your full-time career. Um, you know, so few people that I talk to are able to actually find fulfillment in their full-time job. Right? It's a day-to-day -day grind, nine to five, get me out of here, get me doing something else that I love as quick as I can. Right? So many people can't find happiness or joy or fulfillment because of the nature of their work. And that's why many of you have been attracted to this. Because in this, even if you're only doing this a few hours a week, you find your joy, you find your fulfillment, you find your ability to help and transform other people's lives. Is that right? Some of us are lucky and can, actually our full-time gig is something that we love. And I got lucky in finding that. Tonight I'm here with my wonderful uh, cohort, Kimberly, who's part of the Rhapsody team. Back in 20, 2011, we started a small company. Small company. It was me. <laughs> That's why it was small. It was just me. But I had a dream to help leaders and organizations transform. See, we're not a coaching company. We are, a, we are in the business of transformation, just like you in the business of transforming lives. And I had this dream of building a company that would help do this en masse. And now, uh, six years later, uh, it's a little bigger. Uh, we're in, uh, there's 20 of us now in six different markets across Canada and in the US. 
uh, working with clients both here in Canada and the U.S. internationally. Uh, again, working with large organizations, many brands that you would be familiar with. Um, and it's exciting to be able to uh, uh, do something significant to help other people's lives. But I knew because of the level of that dream, the, the size of that dream, a lot of effort would have to go in. Does that make sense? And so I dove in. I didn't have a backup plan. I didn't have a plan B or C or D. I only had plan A and in I went. And some of us are able to do that and some of us aren't. And there's absolutely no judgment uh, in, in wherever you're at in life tonight, wherever you've decided to put your, 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 your stake in the ground and say, this is what I can commit and this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it with all my heart, that's awesome. So the size of your dream determines the level of your effort. As we're talking tonight, I want you to keep that in mind. Is that okay? Because I don't want any of you that are in a place where perhaps you're not giving it the kind of time you want, or maybe you are, and you're giving it your max, and you're hearing some of the concepts and strategies that I'm talking about, and you're going, oh my God, I can't do that. We were just talking earlier about being overwhelmed dealing with a 14-year-old who can't, or 14-month-old who can't sleep. God, I remember that, I got five kids. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Every time I say that in the crowd, it's like half the crowd's like, wow. The other crowd's like, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got enough that I'm giving some away at the end. So if you need some child labor at home, I got some extras. <laughs> All of us have issues that we're dealing with in life. No matter where you're at, how much you're committing to tonight, my goal is to leave you with some principles that are going to help you do better. Is that okay? We're, here's where we're going tonight. I want to talk to you about some simple principles that lay the foundation for the strategies that I'm gonna give you. So at first, the first a few concepts, is that okay? I'm gonna get a little bit conceptual, and then I wanna bring it down to, you know, boots on the ground level, some strategies you can start implementing right away. The issue of standing out in a crowded industry is the fitness industry, a crowded industry. Oh my God, there's like a million of you. Now, they're nowhere near as awesome as this crowd, but there's like, there's like a million, you know, uh, gyms and, and shakes and diets and fads and training pro, am I right? Yes. And you know what, welcome to reality, that's the truth of most, most industries. Most industries are flooded with options. And the concept of how do I stand out in the midst of that, how do I do something different, why would people work with me amidst all of the other choices comes down to one thing, understanding what your brand is. Now, when I ask you the question, and we're going to make this interactive, you're, you guys are already demonstrated that you're able and capable of, 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 of being interactive. So when I ask you the question, what does your brand stand for, shout out some answers. What does your brand stand for? Positivity. Positivity. Igniting passion. Igniting passion. Love that. Design your life. Design your life. Integrity. Integrity. Community. 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 What else? What does your brand stand for? Sorry? Hot mess? Is that what I heard? A hot mess. That's awesome. <laughs> it's kind of true. <laughs> Confidence. Struggle. Struggle. Struggle's real, man. It, it takes hard work, right? Vulnerability. Sorry? Vulnerability. Vulnerability. Empty nest. Okay. Leadership. Leadership. Discipline. Discipline. All right. What does your personal brand stand for? Because you're all taught in Beachbody now, I assume, right? No. It's, a good, it's an important question to, to ask, though, isn't it? Because whenever you work for a company, whenever you work with an organization or align yourself with a movement like this one, uh, you've got to be able to answer the question, what does the brand stand for that I'm aligning myself with? But within that larger story, what's yours? What is your personal brand? What do you stand for? What is really important to you? Because brand is not a logo on a, on a, on a PowerPoint slide deck or on your business card. Uh, your brand is your reputation. It's as, as a matter of fact, it's more than that. It's actually known, let's skip to the next one here, as every interaction that people have with you, whether that be in person, online, at the gym, training, whatever the case, every interaction that people have with you is what defines your brand. And when you start to understand that, you can begin to craft that very carefully and do something meaningful in terms, instead of doing something accidental. 
If you want to build a company or build a business or build a brand that stands out, you got to do that intentionally. Does that make sense? What do the interactions, what, the, what happens from the first moment you meet someone, what are those interactions conveying? What message are they sending? What brand are they building? From the first hello, <laughs> how are you, to now we're working together, to now we're reaching out, what is the, 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 the story that you're trying to weave? What is the outcome you're trying to produce? You need to be that intentional. That's how you stand out. The ones that focus on building a story and focus on their customer experience. They focus on what are people, what am I gonna do for people as we journey together and how do I want them to feel along the way? What do I want them to believe along the way? Are you following me? You're creating a story. It's like you're writing this, this, this phenomenal story that people get engrossed in and they can't put the book down. Right? When you think of the brands that you love to work with or that you love to use or that you frequent or you've become loyal to, it's because they've done just that. They've crafted their customer experience very, very carefully. Now, you're very blessed because you're part of an organization that provides a lot of this stuff for you, am I right? Right? You're, you're not like the average person try, trying to start a, a fitness business who basically has to build everything from scratch. Right? When I built my coaching business, I had to build everything from scratch. And it was a lot of hard work. And now when team members join our team, they have support systems, they have a message, they have, they have materials, they have programs, they have pricing, they have all this stuff that's all been worked out for them. And even a coaching path for every client. This is what you do in session number one. This is what you do in session number two. This is how you interact with them in session three. Why? Because we're trying to create a story and an experience that will lead to transformation. And we put a lot of thought into it. So when you're thinking about your business, you're thinking about trying to stand out uh, in your industry. One of the things you do have to understand is this slide that I went, I kind of skipped over quickly, but what do people hate most about your industry? Have you ever given that any thought? If I, if I ask in general, you're, you're kind of representing two industries here tonight. Who can name them for me? There's the obvious one. Network marketing, thank you. <laughs> right? And the fitness in industry, right? Now, let's, let's just talk about network marketing for a second. Can I? Can I do that? What do people hate about network marketing? Everywhere now. It's everywhere now. Right? You don't trust it. You don't trust it. They don't trust it. Don't trust it. Yeah. Pushy. Pushy. <laughs> yeah. They think it's a pyramid scheme. Right? What else? Skeptical. Skeptical. Fearful, <laughs> run away because my cousin just joined Amway, right? <laughs> right? And he's gonna try to sell me, right? Now, right? Isn't that the? It's like it's like the guy. It's like your uncle when he got into the insurance business, and no one wanted to go to family reunion because they knew he'd be trying to sell you insurance over turkey dinner, you know, this kind of thing. So you're fighting that sort of uh, a negative mindset. There's a lot of. I mean, some of those things are generalizations and beliefs. For a reason, they are a, you know, generalizations are a generalization for a reason. They happen often enough that people form a certain belief around things, and that belief then becomes an obstacle to you doing what you do best, which is helping people transform. You have to know what people hate about your industry so you can become the anti that right? Um, how many here, uh, what do you hate about going to the doctor? I know what I hate, what do you hate about going to the doctor? Waiting, Waiting right? They have this entire system around waiting rooms. Have you ever seen this? How they do this, right? So they tell you, your appointment's at two o'clock. All right, great. So I always show up early. I'm one of these guys, I always want to be on time or early. So I show up 10 to two. I don't know why I do this with the doctor, but I still do. Show up 10 to two, they take your, you know, they sit in the waiting room, we'll call you when they're ready, right? Do they ever call you on time? No, it's called a waiting room. Right? So you wait, you wait, you wait, the time's gone, you're looking at your, your watch, maybe you have another place to be after this, and now you're, oh, I'm going to really have to scoot, and I'm really going to have to run and make it to my next appointment, and you're really stressed out. And then all of a sudden, right, they say, come on in. They welcome you to the back, the mysterious place behind the glass, right? They well, and you're going, this is awesome, they're going to see me now, right? And they take you to the back, and they take you to one of the exam rooms, and they sit you down, right? And you sit down, you go, you're in waiting room number two now, <laughs> right? So I talk to doctors, when I talk to doctors or, or dentists or anybody in that kind of industry, I say, you know, people hate that. 
You, 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 you say you want to change your industry. You say you want to be the best at what you do. How about you just deal with the wait times? If you say 2 p.m., see them at 2, not at 2.50 or 2.45. To really understand how you stand apart in an industry, I'm here to tell you it doesn't take much because the bar is so low. I have had thousands of conversations with leaders and organizations. We've worked with hundreds of companies, and the bar is so low on the customer experience. It doesn't take much to stand out. Don't focus on your marketing. Focus on your customer experience. If you focus on your customer experience, your marketing will take care of itself. People will start talking about how great you are. They'll start referring you to friends and family, and you'll develop raving fans. I'm not saying don't market, but everyone wants to know, give me the latest trip tips for you know, Instagram and Facebook so I can become an overnight sensation. It doesn't work that way, man. Build a business people want to be a part of. Build something attractive. You guys already have. I mean, I walked into this room tonight. I was like, all of a sudden, I was like, ooh, I'm going to start dancing. <laughs> and you don't want to see me dance because I've been told I can empty a room in like 30 seconds flat. It is not my forte. But the energy, you've got energy, you've got, we talk about igniting passion and transformation. You're, what you're about is attractive to the average individual who is living in mediocrity, sadness, depression, overweight, not healthy, Tired of looking in the mirror, not liking what they see, looking right back at them, right? right? People are facing these demons every single day and you have an opportunity to give them hope. What you sell, your ultimate product is hope. And when, if you can get a hold of that and craft an experience that builds hope into every stage, into every session, into every conversation, guaranteed, man, you'll have something that people will be knocking down the door to be a part of. Does that make sense? All right. You still here? Let me give you some quick principles on how to stand out. Um, and I, I'm hopefully, hoping these will be helpful for you. As a business owner, as a business leader, as someone who's trying to do more than just work out but help transform lives and, and gather more people to do the same, you, you must always be connecting. Always be connecting. Never underestimate the amount of outreach and connecting you must do, especially in the early stages of your business. I, <laughs> listen, how many here have been here for a year or less in Beachbody? A year or less. Most of you, okay? Uh, and, and all the others, you're the veterans, is that right? right? Or a year or more? How much connecting do you need to do? A lot. Always be connecting. I'm going to give you some tips in a few minutes about how to do that more effectively. Uh, but don't compromise your ability to grow your business because of desperation. Listen, nobody likes to be pressured into anything. And working in an industry where you guys have that dark cloud hanging over your heads of the network marketing, they're gonna pressure me into something. If you're not connecting frequently enough, what's gonna happen is you're working too few relationships, you're working too few angles, so to speak, and in the ones that you are then working, you're gonna inherently apply more pressure than you want to. Why is that? Because you need to grow your business. You're trying to make a living at this. You're trying to make some income at this. I see this with salespeople all the time in all kinds of other industries. They're, their funnel just isn't full enough. They're just not nurturing enough relationships. So what happens is in the few that they are, those people can smell them coming a mile away. Don't compromise your business by not having enough connections. Engage in consistent outreach, consistent outreach, in, in order to increase your reach. And by that, I don't mean your Instagram account. There's value in that, don't get me wrong, but I think we place way too much value on the social media side of things. I'm gonna talk about that in a few minutes, but if that's your only way of reaching out, you're limiting the growth and the potential of your business, okay? You need to be connecting regularly. Uh, and keep at it even when your momentum begins to grow and get strong. This is the biggest mistake uh, business leaders make. All of a sudden now they get traction, things are moving, they're starting to get clients, their team's growing, right? Their downline's growing. Things are really exciting at this phase. And we start then to lay off the very things that got us to that place of momentum, okay? So can I encourage you, even when you start seeing traction, keep connecting. The next one is stay on target. This is so important. I, I wanted to use a Star Wars themed graphic here, but I'm just not sure how many Star Wars fans I would find in the audience, because you know the classic line, right? The classic line from A New Hope, stay on target, stay on target, right? Loop. Yes? Is there, is there a few of you can follow me? The rest of you are saying, get out of the room? Thank you. All right. You, all of you people, where are you? Star Wars lovers? Okay, you're my new best friends. All right, good. Stay on target. What do I mean by stay on target? Uh, not long ago, we hosted a networking event in our office, and uh, 
there was um, a young lady who was just getting started in the fitness industry, not with Beachbody, um, with the competition. Uh, and uh, <laughs> she showed up and we were going around the room and encouraging everyone to stand up and introduce themselves and what you do, right? And she was kind of standing up and, and, and had a, was very bubbly and uh, lots of energy. And she said, I'm here to, you know, transform lives and help people get fit. Oh, that's great. And, uh, and then we, you know, like just asked her, so who's kind of like your ideal client? Who's your, your target audience, the kind of people you want to work with? And she goes, oh, everybody around the world. <laughs> Literally, that's what she did. <laughs> And, I, and instantly my heart kind of sank, because see, if you're trying to reach everybody, you won't reach anybody. If everyone's a priority, no one's a priority, okay? You gotta get clear on the types of people that you wanna work with. You've gotta clearly define, what is an ideal client for me? Are you looking to work with high-end, you know, the top 5% athletes? I know a friend of mine who's got a gym and that's who he works with. He works with fitness models only, right? And he uh, and both men and women to get them ready for fitness physique competitions. That's all he works with. And he's been very clear on that and he attracts them. He is not a coach to everybody. He's a coach to that kind of athlete, right? Are you a coach to single moms that are, you know, perhaps uh, with three kids at home who don't have time to go to the gym? Are you a coach for the professional who's leading a busy business and doesn't have time to go to the gym, right? Who are you trying to reach? You need to get really specific on this because the more specific you become, the more you're able to attract them. Does that make sense? Remember the story I said you're trying to build, the experience you're trying to create for your your, your clients, how can you build that effectively if you don't know who you're building it for? And won't that look very different for different types of people, right? So you need to get clear on who your target audience is and build your business accordingly. Focus your efforts on people who meet that criteria and only those people. We talk about uh, in business, the, the business that you land. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm here as a business coach. Is it okay if I use business terminology? Is that all right? You are business leaders here after all, okay? We talk about uh, the business that you land and the business you go after. The business you go after is what I'm referring to here. That target market, that ideal client, that person that I really want to work with, and I've clearly defined that. And that's where all of your efforts should go. Don't go chasing after folks that don't meet that criteria. Disqualify the ones that don't meet that criteria and move on very quickly. Why is that? How important is what you do? Okay, I was waiting for an answer. I was happy to stay in your own life if I have to, but I have limited time, so move it along. <laughs> How important is what you do? Very much. Life-changing. Right. So do you have time to waste energy and effort and resources and all of that on the kinds of folks you don't even really want to work with? No, focus your energies. Focus them so you can get a better result. Stay on target. Everyone say, stay on target. Stay on target. <laughs> okay, this is, this is like a really bad church song, I'm just saying, no one's together, Come on, let's, let's do this all again, ready, one, two, three, oh, I knew you could do it, all right, the next part is learn from your mistakes, because you're going to make a lot of them, and as a matter of fact, you can't succeed without making them. You're only gonna figure things out. Sometimes you're gonna figure it out because what you tried didn't work. You need to be learning from those mistakes. First thing you need to do is give yourself permission to fail. Listen, most of us that are drawn to the fitness industry, a lot of folks that are drawn to the fitness industry initially is for weight loss reasons or getting healthy again. It's because we didn't feel good about ourselves. Is that true? Yes? Okay. There's a belief and a script that's playing in our head that says we're not good enough, we're not good enough, we're not good enough, we're not good enough, and if I can lose some weight and get healthy, then I'm gonna be good enough. Guess what? That script doesn't go away just because you get well, or fit, or lose 50 pounds. That's a whole other ball game you've gotta address. That's a belief you need to unpack and remake. Because no amount of uh, working out or health, you know, weight loss or, or awards or achievement in business and life will ever make that go away. It's like chasing a sunset. The minute you think you've got it and got there, it's gone, right? But you got to give you, for those of you that, uh, you know, struggle perhaps with this script and maybe it's still a script that plays in your head, you need to give yourself permission to fail. 
You need to say that this is okay, that this is not a reflection on you being somehow, you know, deficient or something's wrong with you or you're just not as successful as that other person or you're not good enough if you can't quite keep up with, was it the emerald level coaches? Is that the top? Is that? Diamond. that oh, diamond is top, of course. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a new guy. <laughs> you know, trying to keep up with all these jewels and it's really confusing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give yourself permission to fail. It's okay. You know that you're doing what the vast majority of people never will try? Yes, sir. Right, first attempt at learning. Another author calls it failing forward. Every time you make a mistake and you screw up and you try something in business and it doesn't work out, or you make a mistake and trying to craft this, per this great experience for your clients and it backfires on you, like, ooh, not doing that again, right? But you're failing forward, you're learning, you're growing. But you gotta start by saying it's okay for me to do this. The, the, the companies that are growing the fastest and innovating the quickest and changing the face of industry are the ones that embrace failure, right? As a matter of fact, they reframe it. They don't call it failure. They say it's just an experiment that didn't work out. And they move on to the next one. View every failure as an opportunity to learn and grow. Keep learning, keep growing. It's only failure if you don't learn anything from it. It's only failure if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result every time. Some would even call that insanity, right? But if you're learning and you're growing, your business will grow. Create a feedback loop. How many here actually create a feedback loop in your business to find out how am I doing as your coach? How many of you do that? Do you do that? Do you know, we have it built in to our systems where it happens automatically, right? Where a company reaches out on behalf to the clients and we bypass the coach. And why do we do that? Not because we don't trust our coaches. We want our coaches to get feedback so they can keep growing and becoming better and better and better. And we also want to catch problems with our clients early, right? You don't reach out to a client when they're upset. By that point, it's a little hard. You want to reach out to them while they still like you, but they might be a little bit, mm -hmm. something's not quite right here. Create feedback loops. If you're not talking to your clients and asking them on a regular basis or your team, how are things going? How can I improve as a leader? How can we make these events better? I mean, I heard that already tonight, so that's phenomenal. Your, your most unhappy clients are your greatest source of learning. And if you're not talking to them, you won't grow, you won't learn, you won't move, right? So principles of learning from your mistakes. And never ever give up. Never ever give up. If you believe in what you're doing, you just gotta keep trying. You gotta keep working at it. But make sure you're not trying with the same bad plan that's gotten you in the mess you're in now. I've said that, you know, if you've got a real dream, remember the size of your dream determines the level of your efforts, remember that? Yes, I remember, I was a great speaker, I introduced that earlier tonight. <laughs> and, uh, it was great, it was awesome. <laughs> oh wait, that was me. Um, when you have a real dream, a real vision, you, you can't just give up on it. The problem is people try a certain way of seeing that dream become a reality and it doesn't work, and they throw, that, they throw the dream away. Often it's not the dream you need to throw away, it's the plan. Maybe your plan just wasn't up to snuff. Maybe it actually sucked. That's all right. Go back to the drawing board, get a new plan. But let the dream keep inspiring you. Let the, keep, the dream keep motivating you. Let the dream continue to inspire you to do what you're doing, which is changing lives. Right? Now, you've got to say this with me. And you've got to say it with slight... No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know, you're over ready. You've got to say it with a, kind of like a, a southern soulish feel. Right? Like, like baby, you got to believe. Right? You hear, right? It's just not the same if you say it like a white person. You have to believe. There you go. All right, you ready? Say it with me. You gotta believe. You gotta believe. You gotta believe, man. You gotta believe in what you're doing. You gotta believe in yourself. You gotta believe in your product. Selling ultimately is about the transfer of belief. People buy not what you do, but how you do it and how much you believe in it. 
And when you convince, when you are able to convey that in your communication, regardless of your personality style, because maybe you're like me and you're one of these like really shy wallflower types, you know. Uh, <laughs> Or maybe you're more exuberant. It doesn't matter what your personality style is. This has nothing to do, conviction has nothing to do with how it comes out on the outside. It just comes through. When you're talking to someone and you truly believe in something, they, they, that, that belief gets transferred to them. They start believing it too. Is that right? He's like one of the only other dudes in the room. <laughs> you and Justin. The three of us. Oh, sorry. And, and our cameraman and our technical guy and this gentleman right here at the back. We are certainly few and far between in this room. All right. Transfer of belief. It's about transferring that conviction that you have that what you do matters so much that it could make an impact on someone else. It's transferring that. But you have to start with this deep belief in yourself. So back to that script for a second. You will do yourself and the world a great favor, but mostly yourself, by silencing the voice that tells you you're not good enough. Silencing the voice that says to you on a regular basis in a third person like it's someone else, but it whispers in your brain, you'll never amount to anything. Uh, that voice that tells you that ultimately, no matter what you do, you'll always be second rate. Right? Now, I know nobody in this room has ever struggled with those kinds of voices or those kinds of scripts in their head, but maybe you know someone who does. Silence it. Create a new belief. Right? That you are good enough. That's why you're here. Right? What, it, what probably attracted you to this, I can tell you, I've been in the people business for like 30 years. They're like, tell us, tell us. <laughs> Faith and hope. Right? That change is possible that I can become a better version of myself. Yes? Now that's a good belief to hold on to. I, every day, I can become a better version of me. That's a much better script than no matter what I do, I'll never measure up. Or no matter what I do, I always feel like I'm second rate to so-and-so, right? If you really want to build a business that stands out, listen, there's a lot of in, uh, average, mediocre, business leaders out there. There's a lot of average, mediocre trainers out there that are good at, at their craft, but it's that heart and that conviction and that soul that's missing where they're not conveying the hope and that positive vibe. Yeah, you can, you can convey positivity, but are you helping people reframe the way they see themselves? That's powerful. That's powerful. Believe in yourself. Believe in your company. Believe in your solutions. Because it's really hard to recruit somebody if you don't. Right? It's really hard to sell something you don't believe in yourself. So like I'm a business coach and my primary service that I sell is coaching for business leaders. Guess what? I've got my own business coach that I meet with on a regular basis to help me perform at a higher level. Why? Because I'm just like you and I'm just like every other business leader. Drift happens. We lose focus. We get sidetracked. We start pursuing the wrong priority. Right? We all need help, we all need support. When you believe in what you do, then when you talk to somebody else about it, it's infectious. It's like a virus, does that make sense? Are you following me? And listen, if, um, if you don't believe, fix the problem or fix the belief. Do something, right? Do something. Do whatever it takes to change the belief because the lack of conviction will be your number one hurdle in business. If you believe, nothing will stop you. And that's not my church days uh, talking there. You know, you think about um, 100 pounds. That's crazy. Crazy good. Right? Crazy good. Uh, I was telling the story to a few of you, like, uh, I remember P90X. It was about, uh, oh, 2011, 2010. And I was not in shape, and I needed to get in shape. And I'd been reading about this and seeing it online. I had some friends that had tried it, so I ordered the kit. But I'm the kind of guy, you know when you buy something new and there's an owner's manual? I don't ever read that. <laughs> and in this case, I really should have. Because <laughs> I remember I just popped the CD, you know, in the CD player, and I turned on the television, and I was ready, you know. 
And 10 minutes later, I think like the ambulance was there and they were like, give me CPR. And I was sore for like three weeks and it was horrible. So bad that I never opened the box again. It is, I still have the peanut, no, I know it sounds terrible. I'm a, I'm a terrible client. It's okay, you can, I'm like your, the, the guy you never want to work with, okay? The box is still sitting in my garage on a shelf. I refuse to throw it away just because I spent money on it. I don't, oh, there you go. I don't even need the box. You and I should talk after, give me your business card. And we can get this all sorted out. But, but think, of the, um, think of the hurdles you've overcome just physically for a minute, just, just, just for a minute. Do you remember that first workout? Come on, who doesn't, right? <laughs> it's like, it, it permanently like burned into your psyche, this experience of, oh my God, right? Okay, it's, it's, it's in there. Think of where you are now. Doing stuff physically, you thought was what? impossible and if you're here tonight and you're thinking on the business side I just don't have it in me really look at what you've done and accomplished already if you can accomplish that you can accomplish anything so the good news I didn't tell you why I'm here quickly I'm here for three reasons Mandy <laughs> known her for a long time so great to see you again after 20 years honestly it's just it's great and uh, so when she invited me, I said, oh, I'm happy to come. It's just so great. Secondly, my own personal fitness journey. Thankfully, I stumbled around for a while after that terrible experience and experiment with that dreaded box that will remain closed forever in my garage. And in 2014, I had been coaching a client of mine who runs his own strength and conditioning gym in the Orleans area. I've been coaching his business for five, I've been coaching him now for five years. I've seen him through three expansions, it's been phenomenal. But in 2013, I looked at him in the summer, July of 2013, and said, Kurt, man, what would it take? I need to get in shape, what do you say? He says, all right, I'll coach you. And that was four years ago, best shape of my life. I wear the same size pants, not the same pants since I was a teenager, because that would just be weird. <laughs> <laughs> right? But the same, I'm back to the same size pants I was when I was like 18 years old. Right? I dropped 25 pounds. I, I can outrun most. I mean, I got like, I feel, I feel great. My energy is amazing. Right? Uh, and but what, you know what I've loved the most? It's not the physical transformation. It's the mental toughness. Not that I was mentally soft before. Because <laughs> nobody's mentally soft. But the increase in mental toughness. So if you hear nothing else from me tonight, if you are doubting your ability to build a business, if you're doubting your ability to recruit a team, if you're doubting your ability to do the stuff on the business side, you've got this, man. Look at what you've done already. Let that inspire you and remind you that when you put your mind to something, you can do anything. When you put the effort in, you can accomplish it. And nothing can stop you. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah, you can, you can do that. I don't know. Let's move on. Let me, let me move now. Those are some principles I just wanted to kind of put out there because they're foundational uh, and so many business leaders have never uh, been exposed to those before or some form of it. But I want to teach you now some strategies that we have used. This is actually the strategy I used back in 2011 when my business was really small. <laughs> just me. <laughs> uh, to, to build a business now that you know is, is, is gaining momentum all the time and it's got really uh, award-winning company now here in Ottawa. And I don't say that to, 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 to you know, blow my own horn or anything like that, but to say this stuff that I'm going to talk to you about, it's not theory I got in a book somewhere. This is stuff that's been tried and tested in the field and it works. You want to build a business, you adapt as much of this stuff as you can. Remember the size of your dream determines the level of your effort. So you've got to look at this and say how much of this can I implement right now in my kind of current routine, but this stuff will get you results. We call it getting prospects or potential clients to give you the nod. And by the nod means they're interested in talking to you further about what you do and now they're, they're asking questions. They're maybe not, they haven't signed anything yet, they haven't given you any money yet, they haven't you know, given you their credit card number yet, but they're interested, okay? You've got them seriously interested. How do you do that? Three things, the NOD stands for three things. The N is for networking strategies, the O is for online marketing, and the D is direct outreach, okay? I'm gonna focus primarily tonight on the first two because I believe you guys have a, a number of referral programs and you know, introduce your friends and family to this, which would be the direct outreach piece anyway. 
I think you have that kind of covered. I'd like to focus more of my time and energy on the first two. How many here do any formal kind of networking? Let me see, let me see your hands. Ooh. Okay. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> Listen, I, I, am I, am I, is it safe to assume that your primary means of outreach is all online? Yes? Yes? And that's, per, I, if, I, I, if, I, if I read the situation and know your business enough or your industry enough, primarily that's because of what? Lack of time. And that's the quickest way, yes, to get your message out and attract clients. All right? So again, the level of your effort, you have to decide that. But if you're serious about taking your business to the next level, uh, you need to look at ways and opportunities to get out from behind your computer screen, which is safe, right? You need to get out of your living room and your family room, and you need to get out there and start connecting in your community, okay? And let me tell you why. Let me give you some strategies for that. The first thing you need to do is select the right events. Now, uh, one more thing I'll say, these strategies that I'm talking to you about, I implemented these, I launched my business in May of 2011. Uh, by the spring of 2012, so it wasn't even a full year later, we were getting feedback on a regular basis when I was meeting new people or running into people that I now knew. They were saying, you guys are everywhere. <laughs> and it was like, you guys, it was me. It was me, right? But because I was at the right events, I was doing the online stuff, right? I was doing the direct outreach, my influence was growing very, very quickly. And I got known very, very quickly in the Ottawa business community for what I, that, what I do, right? So if you want to increase and accelerate the pace at which you attract a team, build a team, and attract clients, you'll consider some of this stuff. The first thing is you got to know which events to go to. Uh, there's a lot of bad events out there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but the events you go to should be determined by the type of people you're trying to attract. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. So if I'm trying to attract, I don't know, somebody throw out an idea. Who's your ideal client? Somebody? Moms. Moms. Okay. So you're trying to attract maybe uh, moms with babies at home or young, young ones at home, right? And so they don't have a lot of time on their hands. Well, probably going to a chamber, a business chamber event is not the best idea. Right? Why? Great people at that event, but it's not the person I'm trying to connect with. So what kinds of events could you go to? Um, well, I joined the parent-teacher committee at school. Parent-teacher committee, perfect. Dance studio, if your kids do uh, extracurricular activities. I have three daughters, so yep. they do all kinds of crazy busy things. So that's where I am. So I talk to everybody. I talk to people at the grocery store because I do grocery floor. <laughs> Wherever. Right, yeah. right, right. So based on your target audience, you're using your natural affinity networks to connect. Don't think of networking in a purely like a networking type event. Yes, there are those things, uh, but there are natural affinity networks that you already belong to that you're probably not leveraging the way that you could, okay? And when you start thinking through again, who am I trying to reach? What am I trying to build here? What kind of experience am I trying to craft? What events do I need to go to to run into more of those people? You gotta select the right events, okay? Uh, the, the next part is set a goal. Uh, you should be setting a goal. Listen, how important is setting goals in fitness? <laughs> Remember, you can't out-train a bad diet. You can't out-hustle bad business practices. It never ceases to amaze me that the same thinking we apply to our physical fitness, we don't apply over to the business side when actually it's one and the same. The same thinking that got, made you successful here will make you successful there. So what do I mean by setting a goal? How many new relationships do you want to forge this month or do you want to create this month? How many conversations with people that you don't know do you want to have to increase your reach? Set a goal, push yourself, right? Now I know some of you are more introverted. That's okay, right? Find other ways to do it naturally. Bring that loudmouth friend of yours along, <laughs> right? And they'll like, introduce you to everybody. They'll do all the hard work and then you just come in for the clothes, you know, <laughs> right? Find ways to do it. Or go in pairs. You know, you, you work as teams already, and perhaps a member of your team has a similar target audience they're trying to reach. Go together and work events, okay? But increase your reach by getting out there and set a goal about how many of a new relationships you want to forge every week, every month, whatever the case may be, have a target that you're measuring against. So you say, how am I doing? How am I growing my network here, okay? Uh, you want to stage the conversation for success, and by that I mean you want to have in, in, in mind, please not like a, um, uh, an elevator pitch that the minute someone says hello to you now, it's like a dog and 
to your little commercial. You ever meet people like that? Does that work for you? It's not going to work for them either. Okay. So think about how you might have a very natural conversation with someone and what are some natural ways of pivoting the conversation through questions and listening to what you do to see and gauge if there's any interest. That takes a bit of work. Okay. We don't have time to get into how we would do that, but this is some of the stuff we help people do. Stage the conversation so that if you're going to events, you're doing more than just drinking a lot of bad coffee. You're actually being successful in, in, in building some bridges, okay? Uh, the others want to make sure you always get their contact information. Do you know, uh, when what, you know, this is so important because, again, you may have a real meaningful conversation with someone. And I understand that in some social settings, like maybe at the grocery store, it would be a little forward to ask someone for their business card. Like, that might be a little weird. But if you're at a more formal event or an event where people are expected to connect, uh, you want to make sure to get their information so that if you got somewhere in the conversation, it doesn't die on the vine. It just doesn't die there because now I've got no way of reaching them. Uh, you know, people ask me all the time for my business card. You know that I do not carry business cards. Ever. You know why that is? Oh, I don't have one on me. Can I have yours? <laughs> and I always walk away with their contacts. Now I can control what happens next. I can control the outreach. If I give them my card, how many times have you handed out a card or some pamphlet with your name on it or whatever and, uh, you know, in the hopes that someone's going to contact you and they never do? Don't let them control that flow of information. You control the flow of information by making sure you secure their information. That's a little ninja tactic, by the way, you just learned. You're getting that one for free, okay? <laughs> Uh, and then you want to make sure that you set up however your sales cycle goes, if it's in a follow-up conversation or, uh, you know, a Skype call or a phone call or something to kind of, you know, talk about next steps and explore together. Again, be proactive in booking that. Uh, often at a networking event, if I say I'm, I'm having a great conversation with someone, I'll ask for their contacts right away. And I'll say, hey, listen, you got your calendar on your phone? You know, all our phones have those things on them now. Right? I said, what, would, would, would it make sense for us to like exchange and try to find a time in the calendar right now and avoid a lot of back and forth? And they're like, oh yeah, that'd be great. And we book it right then and there. So now I've guaranteed a follow-up, okay? So that's more strategic networking than probably what you're used to, but it means being proactive, having a plan, and approaching it uh, in, in that manner, okay? Let's talk about online marketing. I've only got a few minutes left, and I wanna talk about this because this is important, and this is what most of you are doing, correct? How many of you here on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Google Plus? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> LinkedIn? No? Okay. All right. Um, but so, so, how many of you are on multiple platforms? Some of you are on multiple platforms. Okay. Um, can I give you some tips on how to make this work? Um, this is really going to revolutionize the way you think about social media. It's going gonna, it's gonna to blow your Blow your mind, you ready for this? You ready to write it down? If you're taking notes or capture it on your phone, you ready? You ready? ready. It's social. <laughs> social media, social, it's social. Do you see how, see how that works? Are you making the connection? Isn't that, doesn't that like, <laughs> right? Social media, you gotta be careful, this is not, a channel for pushing ads and promotions and stuff down to your network because watch the unfollows and the dislikes and the disconnects begin to happen faster than you can uh, you can count to 10, right? Social media is a powerful way to get your message out if you do right. Let me give you some quick tips. Again, know who you're trying to reach. Why do I keep bringing this up? Well, just like if you're going to networking events and you know which, uh, ch uh, which events you should go to, based on who you're trying to reach, you should choose which platform you focus on. Does that make sense? Anybody here trying to reach business leaders, like that's your ideal client, anybody? What? <laughs> yes, thank you, one in the room, thank you. Did you just come up with that now? No, okay. <laughs> just trying to make me feel good. Business leaders, listen, you, you wanna talk about a market, holy crap, these people don't have time for anything. Busy business leaders, that's a great market to go after. Now, if you're going after them though, which platform do you think you should be focusing on? LinkedIn, right? Because that, that's where they are, okay? So you've got to know which platform is the best for the, 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 the audience you're trying to reach. Make sure that in your posts you tell your story. Since the beginning of time, we have been fans of storytelling. 
Human, humanity has, has evolved and shaped and formed and become what it is around stories. Right? From the very beginning of time to now, we are captivated by stories. We love to hear stories. Uh, stories of people's lives, stories of transformation, stories of change, stories of hope. Right? So make sure you, your story comes across. Uh, but make sure that it doesn't like take up the whole your whole feed. Um, do you have that friend that when you're trying to have a conversation with them, they dominate the whole conversation and you don't get a word edgewise? And when your lunch meeting's over, you're like, yeah, yeah thanks, for, thanks for that. <laughs> right? Because you, you barely said anything, right? How does that make you feel? Connected? No. Engaged? Ready to book another lunch? <laughs> no, you're like, get away from it. Ah, so now I'll never get back, man. That's terrible, right? Too much posting about you has the same effect. It starts to come across like a little bit self-absorbed, okay? So you gotta strike the balance between telling your own story and telling theirs, right? People love to hear stories of change. Champion the stories of your clients and people on your team that have seen tremendous transformation. You're getting the same message across, but you're, it's not you now that's center stage. It's the story of change and transformation that's weaving through. You're building a theme here in your posting, right? That people can pick up on. Again, it inspires them because maybe when they're following you and they're seeing you talk about what it's done for you, maybe they can't really relate to you. I mean, that might be news to you, but not everyone can relate to you. So by posting stories of other people, guess what? They might connect to that story. They might relate to that individual. That might be the door that gets them in. That might be the, the flame that fires up hope for them and gets them believing that this could happen for them too. All right, so make sure you tell lots of stories. And the, the beautiful part is now with uh, Instagram and, and channels like that, it's all picture-based, right? They're, use imagery, use imagery, use video. Uh, people don't like to read anymore. It's really, it's terrible. Imagine where the English language will be in 10 years. I'm afraid to even think about it when I see like how people text and write. It's terrible, right? But listen, that's the people communicate visually now. So use lots of that stuff. Um, add value, right? In your content, add value. Uh, give tips and hints and, and ways of uh, uh, eating better and getting fit and how to squeeze in a workout and a busy schedule and add value. Teach. We call this education marketing. They're not going to pay you for it, but they're going to start following you for it because they love the value you're adding, right? And then, once in a while, invite them to take action. Once in a while. Uh, one author said it's like, you, you know, jab, 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 right hook, or left hook, I guess. Left hook being the, the call to action, the invitation to do something. Most of the time, you're just jabbing, and then a left hook. A good rule of thumb is don't, don't do a promotion or a call to action unless you have at least five or six other posts related to this stuff in between. Okay, add lots of value. Tell stories. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, and then, but then make sure you invite them uh, to take action. So, so important. Let me just uh, introduce this concept to you and then we're going to open up quickly for some questions and answers right before I close because we're just about out of time. Um, here we have the image of a hunter and the image of a farmer. Okay, um, I use this analogy because in the terms of building business, you may be familiar with the terms hunting and farming from a business perspective. Have you heard this before? Hunting and farming? Okay. Let's, well, let's just go back to the hunter and the farmer motion. Let's say you've just broken ground on this plot of ground. You have no neighbors within miles. You're all by yourself in the middle of nowhere, and you need to feed your family that night. Which approach would you use? The farming or the hunting? The hunting. Why would you go hunting and not plant a crop? Because hunting, you, you'll get something right away, or at least within hours of your efforts, right? You're, you're going to be able to feed your family that night. Farming is a good long-term strategy, but in the short term, you'll all starve before you bring that first crop in. Now, in business, it's the same way. All those of you that are a year, even those of you are two years or less, even I'd say even three years or less, in the beginning, you have to engage in far more hunting type activities to build your business than farming. Social media is farming. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? It's farming, man. It's smart, 
It's good, it's strategic, and it's powerful, but you're, ain't gonna, you're not paying your mortgage with that next month. It's gonna take time for a good social media strategy and story and theme to start picking up steam. Start building it from the get-go, but you better have some other strategies if you hope to get your business off the ground and do so in a way that's successful and powerful and get established more quickly. And that's some of the other strategies I was talking about. Introductions and networking and getting out there. You start building your business on all three, three pillars like that and you'll see yourself get some great traction, okay? Uh, before I close, let me open up. We have time for maybe two or three questions, and then I'll, I'll bring it right, like I'll land the plane real fast. Okay, land the plane. Anybody with some questions on what we talked about tonight, building your business, standing out in the marketplace, social media questions, outreach questions, one business owner to another? Yes? Like, what level of like, what level of So surveys, you don't have time for that, and they don't have time for that. Ask this magic question. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being high, how likely are you to refer me to your friends and family? And if it's anything less than a 10, what do I need to change to make it a 10? You ask that question, you'll get all the feedback you need to become the best coach that's ever lived and walked the face of the planet. I'm serious. Customer service uh, surveys, people don't fill them out, or they're not honest on them. Ask them that question, and you'll get some powerful feedback each time. Say this with me one more time. The size of your dream determines the of your efforts. Right? Say it again. The size of my dream determines the level of my effort. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge plus action is power. So take some of the stuff we've talked about here tonight, start applying it, and you'll start seeing great results. Thanks, everybody.